And we had a purple rain in Washington, D.C. this weekend as the Vikings have won six in a row. They are now seven and one on the year. And it's it's just been a common theme, and I think it's just been the motto for the this Vikings team is they, they found a way. It was not pretty. It was ugly. And I think Washington is a lot better than what their record is. And I think with the news of Dan Snyder possibly putting the team up, or well, I think I say possibly, but it sounds like a 90% chance that he's going to be putting the team up for sale, that this is – there, there was a little more juice and a little more excitement and energy around FedEx Field on Sunday because, and Paul Allen talked about it on his radio show today, that the Viking, that Washington is a football town and they love their commanders, football team, Redskins, whatever you want to call them. We'll call them Redskins here because that's. Yep. They're that's the Redskins. We're used to. And, Redskins forever. <laughs> Redskins forever. Hail. Nah, I can't say that. Never mind. No. Hail, hail to the Redskins. I'll no. say it. Ugh, gross. Yeah. And, and that is a football town. And Paul, and like like I said, that it was there was a little bit more juice. I think the team fed off that, and they made it interesting. But in the end, the Vikings again, they just found a way. And Ethan, where are the chains at? Um. I did not wear them tonight, but uh, oh. Kirk probably still has Ooh. them on his house. Ooh. I hope Kirk has them on still. He looked great. Honestly, how how happy did he look? That was so cool to see. Since when did Kirk have a freaking six-pack? Like, the dude is yoked, actually. Dude's an NFL player. Yeah. This shouldn't I, this mean, shouldn't I don't think there's us. a lot of quarterbacks, like, white quarterbacks that look like him in the NFL, physically. No, that's right. No. Like I was impressed. And yeah. it, it also he's got he's got what two kids? Two, two or three. Two yeah, or three. Cooper. So it's, it's you know, he, he wears two. the dad Cooper and one more. He wears the dad outfit each week. You know, to yeah. his, his post, and you'd think, Oh, he's got a little little dad bod going there. You know, he's a white quarterback from Michigan. He's mm-hmm. he's he's not a specimen by by any means, but the dude looked good. He did. He did. My, I was pretty favorite, impressed. My favorite meme from the uh, from the weekend was Kirk Cousins went to she'll be home by ten. Do she calls me daddy too? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, it's fantastic. That but is the, damn good. The, this is this team is this team. They just like find they find a way. They just seem so much more excited to be playing football this year compared to previous years. I saw I saw a video of a speech after. After a Zimmer win, where it was like very, very just business like, and then you they you watch the game, the post game speech yesterday, where there was excitement. They were giving out game balls. There was cheering. You even got Ziggy Wolf in the locker room dancing. Yeah. And so I I think that there there's been a culture change. I think the players have bought in. I think it's letting Kirk be a little bit more of himself, where it felt like. With Zimmer, he was more so walking on eggshells. And it, it's reflected. It reflects in the record that the culture that KOC has put in, congratulations to him, by the way, just, just had a kid. Super Bowl, baby. Fourth yeah. kid. Super Bowl, baby. Literally, he did tell the team that. <laughs> hey, he had a hell of a couple weeks in February. He won a Super he Bowl as a coordinator for the Rams. First time head coach for the Minnesota Vikings. There's a lot to celebrate. Yeah. Oh, oh, Super Bowl. Oh, I got you now. I got yeah, it. Yeah, there, there we go. <laughs> I yeah. had to think about that for a little bit. I was like, wait, are you saying he's going to the Super Bowl? or? No, oh, it happened. It gotcha. happened yeah. Yep. He no, literally yeah. told the team, you guys do the math on that one, like in, our, in <laughs> their first meeting. All right. Yeah, well, well, who? Uh, Mich- Michigan's tight end, Eric All, he had a uh, – his son was first born – his first son was born August 27th, so you guys can do the math on that. And it's like he beat up Ohio State and then yeah. uh, then went home and beat up something else that night. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But, but back, but, back uh, to the Vikings back game. To the what game. are your guys' thoughts? Yes. Even though they didn't look the best, I thought that was their best game, if that makes sense. Um. Kirk made so many throws under pressure that were just absolutely 
ridiculous throws. Like that deep ball to Jefferson down the left sideline was just absolutely stupid with Jonathan Allen breathing down his neck. Uh, there were so many like that. So many he, the 50-50 balls that he's actually throwing this year. Like last year, he never would have even attempted half of those. Or this year, it's like literally he's doing it all the time now. Like Jefferson, how many 50-50 balls he probably should have caught? I mean, the, the two in the end zone probably should have been caught. One of them might have been P.I. I don't like – oh, a lot of people are saying P.I. at the end of the first half. I don't think it was. That was just good coverage by St. Juice. But uh, Kirk's given his guys chances, which you can't really say he's done the last couple of years. Well, and I, I think that goes to Dylan's point. New regime, new culture. Kirk's feeling good about himself. He's going to be a little more aggressive because – He's probably got a head coach and an offensive staff who are telling him to take his shots. They're like, hey, Kirk, we got a pretty darn good defense over on this side, we feel. You can be aggressive and try to take those deep shots. And if you throw an interception, that's just like a long punt. You know, we'll get the ball again. And then guess what? Just keep attacking, keep attacking, and, and good things will happen. Yeah. Um, and again, we said this before, but last year's Vikings team would have found a way to lose this game. They'd be they one in seven. They'd be what exactly? Yeah, exactly. They'd be all these one possession games. They'd be one in seven. Yeah, you know, like actually, last year we're always talking. Oh, what could happen if the Vikings would finish out these games and they'd be fifteen and two? Well, I'm not saying they're going to be fifteen and two this year, but they're finishing out these games and you know they they got a pretty damn good lead in the division. They might they might mess around and win 12, 13 games. Well, that and and it, and, and on the defensive side, their pass rush has improved every week where it seems like Zadarius Smith and Daniel Hunter are just living in the backfield all the time. Cause I, I don't know how many more times they sacked, they sacked Heineke last, last yesterday, but it felt like it, well, was, you know, it was a good amount. And, and their situational pass rushing is impressive too, because it seems like anytime it is a third down or a crucial spot in the game, they find ways to get pressure on the quarterback and either get a sack or throw it away or make him throw throw the ball earlier than he wants, and it doesn't go where the quarterback wants it to go. Like, I don't know what the difference between a hurry and a pressure is, like, statistically speaking, but I want to say Zadarius is first, tied for first in pressures, Daniil's 12th, and then Daniil's third in hurries. So, like, that's just constant, like, from those two. Like, especially Zadarius, he's been an absolute menace. Mm -hmm. Well, and and also, guys, how big was – was the addition of TJ Hawkinson this week. First game, oh. nine catches, 70 yards. How many big third down catches? On nine targets. On nine in targets. Game. This, this guy have. They said third down, Washington's like, no, we're going to jet, we're going to double team you, or we're going to play this cover two shell, and you're not going to beat us. Well, Hawkinson's just going to come slide in, get nine catches for 70 yards, and you need a catch on third down, he's going to get it for you. And it was cool after the game on the radio, he's interviewing Ben Lieber and they said, TJ, how do you feel? And he goes, I'm not going to lie. I haven't won many road games in my career. And this one, this, this one feels pretty good, but, and then he's only going to get better each week. Um, and, and you know, now people are like, well, we can't let jet beat us. KJ Osborne's a monster on third down. You're going to have one of the best tight ends in the NFL. Who's what only 25, you know, on your roster terrorizing yeah. these defenses. I mean, when was the you know when was the last time in Kirk's career he had a legit tight end who he could go to and he felt comfortable with? I mean this this could be just another weapon for this offense to really take off in these coming weeks when he gets more comfortable, you know, with the system and KOC can see what he does well. And then also, not to mention what he's going to do in the run game as a blocker. If you know get get Dalvin going and then Madison, this offense could be unstoppable. Well, I feel like this is the first time they've been able to consistently get passes over the middle. I feel like everything for the first part of the year has been outside the numbers, where now mm-hmm. they have Hawkinson. They just literally – all he did was roam the middle, and they had no answer. 